So today I'm going to make a really simple mini game with a lobby and intermission and teleport players to a map. And uh, I'll add I'll add more videos to this if people like it. So I'm going to delete the base plate here and add a part. And my part will be lobby. And let me make that zero zero zero. Go ahead and hit F if you lost it. F is for frame. Frame it in. Anchor your part. I'm going to make it 64 by 1 by 64. You'll probably want to make it bigger. And the only decorations I'm going to have are spawn points. All right, so I'll just do four. Control D. Control D. Oops, I want that. I want to go blue. There we go. And control D. There. So let's add those. We'll say um, group them. I'm going to call them spawns. Did I spell that right? Yep. I'm going to click on lobby. And I'm going to group that. And I'm going to put it in a model called lobby. So if you put walls and stuff, just put it inside lobby. Keep it organized. All right, now I'm going to add another part, and this part is going to be my map. There we go. Map. And don't forget to anchor it. In this position, I'll just go 100 by 0 by 0. We lost it, so I'm going to hit F. And you can see our lobby's right over there. All right. Now did anchor it oh size and you'll make this a lot bigger it's not gonna be a very interesting map if it's just 64 studs but once again it's good for demo so I'm gonna add a part and this part is I'm gonna call it spawn but it's actually just gonna be a teleport pad and oh <laughs> let me change that I change that to map control Z and I'm going to change my part to spawn. All right. I'm going to make that 5 by 0.5 by 5. Go ahead and move this back. And we'll put 4 in there. Control D. Control D. Control D. There. Group all the spawns. Let's call it spawns. Click on your map and group that and call this map. Now let's go to our server script service and we want a module script. The module script is going to be our game manager. All right, game manager. I call it a G manager just to save on some typing here. So change the return on that or it won't work. So let's get our map spawns. So I'll just call it M spawns. And what is that workspace? Uh, map spawns and get children. So it's going to give me a table with all the spawn points. And let's do a function. And we're going to call this from our game loop, which is outside of the script. So I'm going to not make it um, there's an intermission not make it local so for now let's just go 5 to 1 by negative 1 and print to the screen this would be great for UI for an add-on video right we can do a maybe in a subsequent video what did I say intermission how do I spell that dot 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 Let's do I. That's good enough for our, our mechanics. Oh, and when we get in here, we're going to have to teleport to players. I'm going to call this is going to be local. Teleport players. Uh, we don't have any we don't have any info in the players, so we can't really do much with that now. Uh, I have another local function for check if anyone is playing. You could probably figure out what that does. 
but we don't have any information on them, so I'm just going to do a return true. So our first game, we're just, we're just going to until we update that, we're just going to we're just going to go through once. Um, from our game loop, we want to call play game. That's going to be outside the module script. And we're going to check to see if people are still playing. Still playing. And we'll sign it true. Let's teleport players. Let's do a while loop. So we want this to enter at least once. We'll say still playing. And check if anyone's playing. Oh, not quite right. Still playing do, if still playing is true, do. Now we'll do the still playing. Let me just copy that. I don't know how that got all messed up like that. There. Now let's wait a second. We don't want to flood the system with calls for checks. Got an end. Yeah, that's good. Now, it's not going to be interesting if we play it right now because we can't teleport yet. Um, we need a, and we don't have a game loop. Uh, let's add a game loop. Oh, I forgot that. Game loop. So when we start our game, this is going to, this is going to fire off. So let's get a, let's get a variable for our manager. So we use that requires like import game server script service game manager. And this is going to be really simple. We're just going to do while true do. We'll wait a second. And then we'll do our intermission. Let's wait another second. And play game. So as long as this manager keeps looping, um, it's going to tie up the thread. So it's not going to continue to the next iteration. And that's what we want, right? We don't want people starting over and over and over. Uh, let's see if we got everything. No, let's teleport our players. That'll make it more fun. So in order to teleport players, we need to have session data and we need to have player data. So session data. And if you see, if you saw me use the session data in other videos, I got it from the Roblox documentation. I didn't make it up. Um, what else do we need? Session data. We need events for adding players. And then we also need an event for removing players. Let's go ahead and do that. Game, players, player added, connect. I'm going to add that add player game players removing player removing that's what it is player removing connect remove player and I'm going to add one more too because when we have respawns when we die we want to change the status of our player so let's do an add char for add character All right, so when the player is added, we are going to initialize our session data using the player as the key. And then we're going to assign data. And the data is going to be is playing. It's going to be false because they're going to be waiting. Um, is winner. That's going to be false because they just joined. And let's eventually get our wins. Call that zero. I want a number of players. I'm going to make that accessible to the script. Number of players, zero. We could get that from session data, but it's easier this way. Number of players equals, oh, not new proxy. Number of players plus one. And then when we add the player, let's go ahead and add um, the, player, the character added function. 
That way when somebody dies and they respawn, that'll fire off. So player has this character added event and we will connect that to our add char. And that'll work good. And that way our session data when we get in there local player we need to get the player from the char now because unfortunately the character added doesn't have and doesn't pass the uh, player um, what do we have we have game there were player service and then we have this get player from char and I needed that for my session data because we're using the player as our key so here we're gonna say is playing because he died right so is playing is now false all right that's good that updated him now this um add player and remove player is very similar when we remove player we're going to set that value to nil that's essentially deleting it and then the number of players is going to be less than it's going to be one less because someone removed was removed someone quit all right and then we just need now that we have status let's go ahead and do our teleport all right so we'll go four players and data in pairs session data do hmm get our spawn point and that's our map spawns and I'm gonna make it a random I'll just randomly lands on one of them so I'm gonna go between zero uh, one and the number of M spawns so two people could end up on one spawn point but that'll be all right and now the player has a character and the character has a humanoid root part which has a C frame and if we change that value we essentially move him instantly making it look like we teleported or spawned all right, so we're going to go to the spawn point, but I'm going to actually increase the height a little bit so we don't spawn in this sp teleport into the spawn point. And I'll just move it up three studs. All right, now this data is that is that array data we had. So we have is winner. Let's make it false because we just started. And I, the reason I'm putting it there is I'm just afraid that if we play a new game or something. Um, I want to make sure that it's not, he's not tagged as a winner already. All right. Is player. I always do that playing and that's true. So now, now they're playing. So we're going to check if anyone's playing. That's going to look so much like this loop. Let's get rid of that return right now. We're just going to get our data is playing that's going to return a true or a false so we just want to do an if data is playing then return true so if we make it through all the players and we haven't done the return we're going to return false that means that nobody is playing i think we got everything i think we got our own little tiny game I mean, we'll definitely have to add to it. Let's go ahead and play. So we start. And we're counting down. Here's our intermission. Boom, we're on our, our super fun game. And then I'll kill myself. Ah, ending the game. We have no clear winner yet. I respawn and then we should start intermission again. There we go. Intermission five, four, three, two, one. So that's the basic mechanics of it. We have to declare winners and stuff like that. We have to put UIs. There's a lot of things that we have to do, but we have our game loop. We have a game manager that 
manages our session data, um, a placeholder for our intermission, and that's a good place to get started. So let me know if you guys want more. I'll keep adding to it.